Hi, I'm Jose Tejeron, and in this tutorial I'll be sharing my way of working with Character Creator and iClone to get fantastic results in three different render engines, Omniverse, V-Ray, and Unreal Engine 5. The first step of the process is to create a character using Character Creator. If you're interested in the details around how I configured this particular character, you can check out an article I wrote for Reillusion's magazine website, and a video I produced for the official Reillusion YouTube page. Links will be in the description below. With our character configured, we will now add movements to this very same character. In order to bring it to life, we can take advantage of ActorCore's fantastic motion library. Once we have selected the desired animation, we'll just have to apply it to the character and adapt it to the scene we want represented. So let's start with the NVIDIA Omniverse platform, an application that is easy to download and completely free to use. Once we have it installed, go back to the open project in iClone and look for the USD export button at the top of the program. In the subsequent pop-up window, you can configure various aspects of the export, but in our case, the default setting will work as they are. Next, click on the export button to take the whole project along. You can click the send to server button to send it directly to Omniverse, but in my case, I'll just work off of a scenario already prepared in the program. Now we will export our files to a folder and open the NVIDIA Omniverse launcher if it's not already opened. The Omniverse application can be found and launched from the library menu. For my project, I just need to load a scene in which the character will be introduced. To do this, go to the file menu and click on the add reference option. Don't worry if the character appears with whitish skin. Thanks to iClone's intelligent export system to Omniverse, all the skin texture parameters will be adapted to the program. To apply the textures to a model in Omniverse, we first have to click on the model by clicking either on the 3D model or on its name in the list to the right and apply new material. Afterward, you'll notice that the lower right window will be filled with the material properties applied to the model. These material properties will be editable after clicking on the material symbol. Applying the textures to the material is very simple. We only have to look for the folder with the textures in the content window and drag the textures to different sections that make up the material and configure it in an intuitive way. For other occasions, as in the case of cartoon style hair, we'll need a special material. To apply a different material to an object, we have to right click on it. In the floating menu that appears, click on the create menu and inside it, look for the materials menu. For this example, I'll choose one of the predefined presets of the Omni hair material. Before we see the rendered result, let's make sure that the animation has been exported correctly. Under the help menu, we find a button with the shape of an eye. When you click on it, you'll see a drop down menu where you'll have to check that the timeline option is activated. The timeline menu appears only if we pass the mouse cursor over the lower part of the image. As you can see, the animation has been exported without any problem. If you see that the animation has problems, like for example that the objects in attach mode don't move correctly, you should go back to iClone and bake the animation. To do this, go to the timeline in iClone. In the CC3 Base Plus section, go to the Collect Clip line and select the whole animation line. Once selected, just right click and select Add Motion Plus to Library from the pop-up menu. Then go find the custom animation in the content menu on the left and apply it to the character. In the event that the facial expressions don't work, you'll have to update the programs and re-export the character. Now that's all done, we're going to move on to the really impressive stuff. If we go to the top of the viewport, we can see a light bulb symbol. Click on it and you'll see the three types of rendering that Omniverse has. The first is RTX Real Time, which is the one we've been looking at so far. And this corresponds to the traditional lighting of video games. The second would be the strong point of the program, the RTX Path Traced. And the last would be iRay Photo Reel, the most accurate but with some drawbacks. One of the main differences between the rendering modes is the rendering times. In this case, the scene is quite complex in terms of lighting and texturing, so in order to avoid the noise in the video, the times are quite long for Omniverse standards. At the end of this video, we'll see a general comparison of the render times on a simpler image. But now let's see the differences in the rendering of each of these modes. In the case of RTX Real Time, it is evident that having a minimum number of rays results in a minimum rendering time. This also results in some aspects being less accurate, such as indirect lighting or reflections. In the case of RTX Path Traced, the result is excellent. 
and the rendering speed is so good that you can work on the project while it is rendering without any problems. And finally, iRay Photo Real is Nvidia's bid to become a major rendering engine for movies. Compared to other major rendering engines, this one may have some minor problems with shading in certain situations. Although in this mode you can see that the transmission of color in the leftovers is better than in other modes, it is even impressive in some scenes. As you can see, unlike the previous ones, the rendering of translucent materials does not work by default. So to make it work, we have to go to the IRA menu and go to the Render Settings section. There we will find the option Caustic Sampler. When we activate it, we will see that the result is quite impressive even if we are in a very simple scene. However, given the complexity of the operations performed to achieve this result, the time needed for this mode to completely remove noise and achieve high definition is very high compared to the previous ones. Therefore, I recommend choosing the intermediate mode to carry out the work and obtain good results. Now that we've chosen a rendering mode, we're going to see how to render a scene. If we go to the Render Settings menu, we can find the Path Tracing Render menu. Inside, we can find two important sections, the Path Tracing section and the Denoising section. To explain these parameters, we're going to render a complicated material like the predefined material for Honey. In the first section, we find the parameter Total Samples Per Pixel. Keep in mind, the higher the number of samples, will also increase the rendering time. The second section is the Denoiser, a system that for some years now has been incorporated in many 3D programs. This system detects the areas where there is noise in a render and softens them. However, we have to keep in mind that the more samples it has to work with, the better results it will offer. Now that we have the basics set up, let's render the animation by going to the rendering menu. And in the drop down menu, open the movie capture menu. In this window, we can configure parameters like the frame rate, the resolution, or the engine with which we are going to render. We only have to select the option use current, RTX path traced, and configure the number of samples per pixel. When we are done, we just have to assign a destination folder for the resulting images and hit the Capture Sequence button. The final result is quite good and we have obtained it in a very short time compared to the traditional renders. Now let's import the animation from iClone to Unreal Engine 5. For this, it is advisable to put both programs in parallel on the same screen. Once we have opened both programs, we should go to the Unreal menu, Settings. And inside, we must click on the menu, Plugins. In the pop-up menu, in the Search section, type the word Live to check that the Live Link and iClone Live Link plugins are activated. You will then see that next to the Details menu, a new menu called Live Link appears. If we click on the Source button in this menu, we can access the drop-down menu. Now click on the option iClone Live Link, and then click on OK to accept the port number. Everything is ready on the Unreal side. Now let's go back to iClone for a moment to make the connection. To do this, we need to pull down the Unreal Live Link menu by going to the Plugins menu and looking for the Unreal Live Link menu. After clicking on it, you should see the Unreal Live Link menu with the Transfer and Link options. If the option Transfer is selected, we can go to the bottom of the window and click on the option Transfer File. If we wait for a few minutes, we will have the imported character with all the materials already configured. Now that the character is transferred, we have to link it to the animation. To do this, we go back to the Unreal Live Link window in iClone and click on the Link button. Again, we have to go to the bottom of the window and click on the Active Link option. As you can see, it has been linked without any problem. If this is not the case, possibly the error can be solved by clicking on the personage and going to the Details window. Inside, in the Animation section, we have to set the Animation Mode to Animation Blueprint. Now it's time to record our animation in Unreal. To do this, we'll go to the Sequence Recorder window. Once inside, we'll introduce the models we want to record in the Actors list. Once this is done, we only have to press the Record button, and when the countdown is over, press the Play button in iClone. When the animation is finished, we have to hit the Stop All button in Unreal. When we do that, a pop-up window will appear at the bottom right of the screen so we can open the sequence directly. Now that we've finished using iClone, we can close it so we can focus on the Unreal scene. 
As you can see, in addition to the models that we've imported, the models linked to the animation sequence also appear now. We can remove them from the scene so they don't bother us. If, as in my case, there are textures that you didn't put in iClone, you can apply them to the materials in Unreal. If we click Control plus Spacebar, we can access the content menu of the project. Just import the textures into a folder and create a material. Double click on the material to access the material graph. In this window, we can drag the textures and connect them to the material. Once we've connected the textures, we just need to scale the material and drag it to the material section inside the corresponding element of the model. Now that we have all the materials ready and the scene prepared, we are going to render the video. In the sequencer window, we have to click on the button of the cinema plate to access the render movie settings menu where we can configure parameters such as the output format or the size of the frames. When we have finished configuring the parameters, we only have to give it a destination folder and click on the button capture movie. The result is really surprising for a video game rendering engine. And this is thanks to the revolutionary Lumen system. If we remove Lumen, the same scene would look like this as the light would not bounce off the walls of the room. Not having a system that bounces the light on the shadows makes the contrast very abrupt, even if we retouch it later in post-processing. Now let's import the animation from iClone to 3D Maya to use V-Ray. This time it's enough to select the elements of the scene, go to the file menu, select the export menu, and save the file in FBX format. A floating window will appear in which we will have to select the 3D Maya preset from the different presets. After that, we'll make sure to export all the frames and click on the export button. To import the FBX file into the scene, we can drag it directly into the program. Or we can go to the file menu and look for the import button to look for the file on the computer. As long as we don't separate the FBX file from the folder with the rest of the textures, the model will be imported together with the materials and textures. Unfortunately, we will have to put again all the materials so that they are all V-Ray materials, so that they appear correctly in the render. However, in order not to repeat myself with what I already explained in the tutorial earlier, I'm going to skip the whole creation of the character's materials. I'll just remind you of the basics of rendering the scene. If you click on the Render Settings button, a floating window will appear. In it, we will have to configure the animation parameters, the size of the frames, the type of samples to be used by V-Ray, which should be bucket, and finally, we will have to add the denoiser element to eliminate the noise that may arise. The denoiser in V-Ray does a spectacular job. It can be easily toggled on and off in the Frame Buffer window by going to the Layers menu. The rendering with V-Ray is without a doubt the one that offers the best finish. The lighting has an incredible quality and smoothness. Although it is appropriate to say that, unlike the previous programs which are free, 3D Maya and V-Ray are paid. This can be a real problem when dealing with more complex materials. In this case, the light passing through the honey inside the glass jars, in the case of V-Ray, is completely realistic. In the case of Omniverse, we see a good result, but it doesn't distribute the light as well as the V-Ray case. However, if we use Omniverse's photorealistic render, the result is quite good and gives very nice results. When we come to the Unreal case, we see that the result is not quite as good. If we apply some tricks and effects, however, we can manage to disguise the result so that it is not too apparent. Continuing with the comparisons, it's clear that the big drag on V-Ray and other rendering engines is the time spent to render each frame without noise. Thanks to V-Ray's default denoiser, this takes only 18 minutes. It has to be said that this doesn't just affect the final result, it also affects the workflow. When working on 3D scenes, it is really useful to see the results in real time. This can help us see errors, save us the time of checking how the render is looking, or even allow us to be more creative. In terms of fluid simulation, apart from Unreal, which obviously can only do visual effects, both 3D Maya and Omniverse give a perfect result. However, it's worth mentioning that the visualization of fluids in Omniverse is a marvel. This allows you to edit the simulations in a precise, intuitive, and easy way. 
We can also compare the performance of the denoiser in the different renders. In this case, we also have to leave Unreal aside because the Lumen system uses a different system. In this detail of a larger render in 4K, we can clearly see how both the V-Ray denoiser and the Omniverse denoiser do an excellent job. Without the V-Ray denoiser, it gives a better finish, and in the overall image, the noise is not noticeable. However, in Omniverse, the noise is less uniform and is noticeable in the overall image. However, when applying the denoiser, the result is almost identical or even better in Omniverse. The 10 minutes it takes for V-Ray to render the scene ends up being a big drag in comparison, and it must be said that the denoiser takes longer to apply to the final image than Omniverse. I'm going to finish the video by giving my personal opinion as a professional who uses these programs. These comparisons can be more or less accurate, but at the speed at which these engines evolve, we'll probably make this video out of date, but I think it makes it clear what the strengths of each program are. V-Ray is a very powerful render engine that is used for all kinds of big productions that can be configured to achieve really complex results. This allows, as you can see, to do a fantastic job of integrating it with the real image. It is worth mentioning that the engine is prepared to deal with really rough scenes like forests or cities, giving a superb result that can be hyper-realistic. This engine is paid and not cheap, but it can be installed in a large number of 3D programs, including the Unreal Engine itself. Omniverse is a tool that is becoming essential for productions with tight timescales. In my case, jobs that used to take days to render, I can now deliver them with Omniverse on the same day. The fact that it's free and it's very easy to learn how to use also makes it the best engine to start learning 3D and get good results from day one. Although it is new, the program is constantly being updated, adding new functions and possibilities free of charge, which indicates that it is a program with a lot of potential and a great future. These updates have made it the program that works best with Character Creator, and iClone. Having a direct link between both programs allows us to work better without worrying about compatibilities between formats and materials, so we save a lot of time. So it's highly recommended to bring our characters and animations to Omniverse if we want to get images with amazing results in a short time. The biggest problem with Omniverse is that it is not as flexible as the other programs. This is because it was designed to work closely with other programs. It is better to create and assemble the scenario in another program and then export it to Omniverse. Something that is fortunately easy given the facilities that NVIDIA has for importing jobs. For example, directly from 3D Maya. This makes it even more advisable to work in Omniverse together with Character Creator and iClone so that both complement each other and benefit from each other's advantages. Many of the difficulties I encounter when rendering in the program could be solved if the program included the following features. In addition to the progressive rendering, a bucket system like the one in V-Ray, something I hope they will incorporate in the future, the rendering problems that one can encounter in the program can be ignored, although it is advisable to always render at a higher resolution than we need to get a better quality image. And last but not least, what about Unreal Engine 5? The Lumen and Nanite systems have revolutionized the world of real-time graphics. There are currently film productions using this program in real time for its versatility and speed in the workflow. Your way of working in real time directly with iClone possibly makes the Reillusion program the best program to do the animations of any production using Unreal. This also applies to the world of video games for which Character Creator and iClone have been designed for from the beginning. Working with iClone and Unreal Engine at the same time saves a lot of time and trouble and allows us to be more creative. It's fantastic that even the textures and materials can be passed to Unreal without problems giving an incredible result. iClone also allows us to animate the metahumans as realistically as their incredible graphics so that when we use them the result is just as good. It is surely the best program to give life to these characters. If you're thinking of making a hyper-realistic video game, even if you're a beginner, this is the program for you. Not only because it's free and easy to use thanks to its node system, but also because of the ease of working with other programs and the large number of 
tutorials and facilities that the program offers. If this was not enough, we can finish by saying that in recent times, several major video game developers are developing their most impressive titles in this program. Learning how to use it can make it easier to get into these studios or at least get closer to the quality of these super productions. Before you go, remember that you can buy the We're Besties character pack in the Reillusion content shop. And then in a few months, I will release my latest visual novel, Dear Althea, on Steam, where you can already add it to your wish list. Don't forget to subscribe to the Reillusion channel so you don't miss more videos like these.